Hello, my name is Muriel Arbogast Wilson, and I'm a nursing student at the University of Michigan, class of 2019. I'm going to tell you about a recent patient. Patient is a 49-year-old married Caucasian male. He currently works as a freelance graphic designer. The patient came into the clinic on March 31st, 2016, with a chief complaint of pain in the right abdomen under the rib cage. He is also following up five years post-op after a running accident involving right shoulder dislocation and partial right hamstring tear. His vitals when I took them were heart rate 64 beats per minute, blood pressure 120 over 84, respiratory rate 14 breaths per minute, and temperature 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which are all normal findings. History of present illness. In winter of 1987, patient first dislocated his right shoulder while playing recreational football with friends in college. The second and third dislocations of the same shoulder, as well as the partial right hamstring tear, occurred while running a race in March 2010. Patient described shoulder pain as all-encompassing, rating a 10 out of 10 on the pain scale, which is the worst possible pain, while the shoulder was out of place. Once it was put back into its socket, the pain lessened. Regarding the hamstring, patient described pain as sharp up the inside of the right leg. However, he mentioned that he didn't focus on the pain in his leg as much as the pain in his shoulder since both injuries ar occurred around the same time. Both injuries were made worse by activity and diminished with pain medication given in the ER. However, patient did not remember what he was given. In April 20 2010, five to six weeks following the accident, the patient underwent right rotator cuff surgery to prevent future dislocations, and the hamstring healed with time and physical therapy. The patient's current pain in the right abdomen onset in February 2016. Pain is described as a tightness or squeezing internally just below the costal margin. Pain is rated as a 2 or 3 out of 10 and dull but fairly constant and not accompanied by fever, nausea, or vomiting. The patient works at a desk on a computer most days following a 30 minute commute and his abdominal pain is made worse by sitting upright at a 90 degree angle, such as at a desk or in a car. Patient says the pain is somewhat diminished with 400 milligrams of ibuprofen two times daily and heat and cold do not help with pain relief. The right abdominal pain keeps him from lying on his left side due to an uncomfortable pulling sensation that ensues. However, his sleep is not disturbed by this pain. Health history. Patient, the patient suffered from seasonal allergies, specifically grass and pollen, until receiving rounds of allergy shots from 2005 to 2007 to relieve the problem. His immunizations are up to date. Current medications include B-complex dietary supplements every other day and Mega Red joint care with omega-3 daily. Past hospitaliza hospitalizations <laughs> include a 24-hour stay following a wisdom tooth extraction in which two teeth were extracted, and outpatient surgery in April 2010 to repair the right rotator cuff. The patient had chickenpox as a child, as well as six stitches in the forehead from running into a fence post. The patient had pneumonia in his ninth grade year, 1981. In middle school a few years prior, the patient broke his right ankle two times. The patient visited a dermatologist as a teenager and had a growth frozen off of his shoulder, his left shoulder, and was put on tetracycline through high school and college for acne. Functional assessment. The patient denies all illicit drug use and smoking, but does drink the occasional beer one to two times per week. He drinks two to three cups of coffee daily. The patient typically sleeps about six to seven hours per night, snores regularly, and feels rested most days. When asked to rate his perception of his nutrition from one to 10, 10 being the healthiest possible, the patient rated his nutrition as a seven out of 10. The patient reports eating meat, but not every day. He typically eats breakfast and dinner with snacks around midday and considers dinner to be his main meal. The patient has no handicaps but does utilize corrective lenses, contacts, and reading glasses to aid vision. The patient reports that he drinks water but he claims to need more. Bowel and urinary habits were reported to be regular. Psychosocial data. The patient describes a healthy living environment with a solid support system. He reports that his home and his family are comfortable, safe, and supportive. As a small business owner, the patient described considerate levels of stress, mainly regarding deadlines and managing his workload. The patient and his family are regularly practicing Roman Catholics with a strong faith. The patient has completed a master's degree from Michigan State University. Family history. 
The patient's paternal grandmother died of bladder cancer around age 79, and his paternal grandfather died of a heart-related illness at age 84. The patient's maternal grandmother died of Alzheimer's at age 82, and his maternal grandfather died of natural causes around age, 80, around age 86. The patient's father died in a plane crash at age 33 and had a history of smoking. The patient's mother is alive and she suffers from alcoholism, pancreatitis, hypertension, arthritis, and depression. The patient has one younger brother who is currently 47 years old and in good health, despite having skin cancer as a teenager. Review of systems. The patient reports that he is satisfied with his general health. In light of the two chief complaints, I decided to conduct a review of the patient's musculoskeletal system. In review of the patient's musculoskeletal system, the patient reported no joint pain, swelling, redness, warmth, or deformity. He does take a joint care supplement daily as a preventative measure, as he is an avid runner. The patient displayed minimal range of motion limitations. The right shoulder is sensitive to flexion, extension, and circumduction due to the patient's past right rotator cuff surgery, but all in all, the patient suffers from no limitations in daily activities. The patient reports no weakness, and despite the occasional pain in the right wrist from daily graphic design, no personal history of arthritis can be noted. Because of the patient's history of skin conditions and visits to the dermatologist as a teenager, I decided to conduct a review of the patient's integumentary system as well. In review of the integumentary system, the patient displayed no skin dryness, rashes, or concerning skin conditions. The patient experiences occasional itching but remedies with hand lotion. The patient spent lots of time in the sun as a child and always wears sunscreen, even if he's just going outside to do yard work. There are no recent changes in the hair, skin, or nails to be noted. Physical examination. The patient's musculoskeletal exam revealed even muscle mass and bone structures bilaterally. The patient presented with a normal gait and appropriate erect posture. Upon inspection, there were no signs of scoliosis and vertebrae appeared to be midline. The patient's TMJ, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, hips, knees, and spine displayed no signs of erythema, inflammation, warmth, pain, or crepitus upon inspection and palpation. The patient's neck will occasionally crack upon movement, but no other abnormalities were noted. The patient's right ankle also cracks a considerable amount due to the history of fracture, but no other abnormalities were noted. All joints displayed full range of motion, with the exception of some difficulties with erratic movements of the right shoulder due to the patient's rotator cuff surgery in spring 2010. In the assessment of muscle strength, the patient displayed no difficulties in resisting my movements, so his strength would be graded as a 5 out of 5. The patient's integumentary exam revealed no flaking or lesions on the scalp. The patient's hair was soft with an even red-blonde tone and no presence of gray hairs. Hair amount was moderate and hair distribution was fairly even, apart from moderate male pattern baldness. The patient's skin appeared clean with no perspiration and no noticeable body odor. The skin had an even color, tone, and pigmentation with an abundance of freckles and liver spots. The patient's skin had a normal dry level of moisture, smooth texture, and normal thickness. Skin mobility and turgor were present and there was no evidence of skin tenting. The arms had an even temperature bilaterally and no edema was present. The patient's right shoulder surgery left him with a small scar spanning from anterior to posterior and the growth he had removed as a teenager left him with a circular scar on the left posterior shoulder. The patient's nails appeared short with a normal shape, contour, thickness, and full attachment. The nails appeared clean and the patient reports some nail biting and a brittle quality to his nails. The nails also displayed vertical ridges which the patient claims have been present for more than 10 years. Capillary refill was normal with refill taking less than two seconds. Pertinent systems. Since the patient reported considerate levels of stress attributed to work and the fact that he is an avid runner, it would be in the patient's best interest to assess the cardiovascular system for any abnormalities. According to Steptoe and Kivamaki, it is important to assess the cardiovascular system because of the link of work stress to cardiovascular disease. Also, according to Breitman et al., it is important to assess the gastrointestinal system in the patient's nutrition because of the link between alcoholic parents and the effects on their children. Since the patient's mother has always been a heavy drinker, it would be safe to assess the patient for any risk factors to point to potential alcoholism. Thank you.